Hello, and welcome to another video reflex review by HorribleNight.com. Uh, I'm Josh Lee. This is Justin Lacey. It's me. And Ethan Moses. Hello. Uh, we're going to be looking at Orcs Must Die 2 by Robot Entertainment today. Uh, this just came out on Steam. Other platforms do we have? No, just PC. Just yep. Yeah, just PC right now. Um, and uh, this is a sequel to a very popular uh, indie game. Um Tower defense action, kind of genre. That sound yeah sounds accurate. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a single player game originally though, and Orcs Must Die Two introduces co op, two player co op, um, new levels, some new monsters, all that kind of stuff. And if you own the first game, I believe you can play all the levels mm-hmm. uh, from the first game in the second game co op, which is um, awesome. Yeah, right, right. So I was gonna um, say, Ethan, you're the one kind of touting this game to us originally as. As far as there were, a, there were a flood of indie games around the time that this game came out, but mm-hmm. you you really pushed that this one was something special. Yeah, you know it it, it really speaks to a, a you know two different audiences. Is one of the people that just like to have like a lot of just goofy fun, and also the people that really like to get into the kind of the finesse aspect of these games is really put some time and effort into planning. You know that they're, how their traps are set up because the traps kind of play off each other, and if you could play the game and just have fun, or you can be meticulous with it and I think that this game does that perfectly you know it's as casual as you want it to be but you can get pretty hardcore the scoring system from the first one which is carried over to the second one is is very it's very difficult to fully wrap your head around um you know again you get points and they multiply between like if you hit you know one orc with one trap you keep multiplying these points and the goal is is to keep that going but you don't have to do that to win the game. So there's like that. They say that's a meta game to it. So I've actually heard like people are advising just just play through the game once yep. and then go back and try to do the high score stuff. Exactly, exactly. Because yeah. you, you'll pull your hair out trying to perfect it in the very beginning. So so how much time have you put into Orcs Must Die 2 at this point? Um, at this point, I've probably put in about... I was going to say maybe four or five hours into mm-hmm. it. So just, you know, enough time to, you know, I played a little bit of, bit of co-op, played a little bit of the single player just to get... Try to figure out how much has changed about the game and not a whole lot, which is good. You know, it, it's a refinement type game. You know, it's almost, it, compare it to your Left 4 Dead to Left 4 Dead 2. Um, some people see that as a negative. I see it as a positive because I really liked Orcs Must Die. Um, there wasn't a whole lot they needed to do to improve upon the process, but what they've actually done is given us a different type of progressive uh, progression in terms of the traps and that kind of stuff. So you feel like you're molding your character as opposed to just upgrading everything to a point. So the skull system's a little bit different. Everything's just a little bit different. Well, to me, and I'm sure to a lot of people... Uh, out there, especially once watching, the co-op is what makes oh. this game to me interesting. Yes. More traps, more monsters, more levels. That stuff is great because it was a good game. But you can play two players now. That's a huge. Um, that's a huge feature, and we'll show you exactly what that looks like right yeah. now. Yeah, we've got. So we're gonna join up with our boy Aaron Aaron McNeil, who's online waiting for us. So we're, Ethan's gonna get us into a game and kind of walk us through the intro, and and we'll see what Orcs Must Die Two has to offer. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so you know standard screen. There's a two on it now. That's a different thing. So, um, okay, so right now what I want to show just really quickly is I just want to show a few changes to the spell book. Um, if you played the last one, uh, you manage your gear, you earn gear through going through different levels, and then you could upgrade it to a certain point. Actually, in this game, you're actually given a lot more flexibility in terms of how you want to upgrade things. So you have your standard, you know, make this stronger, make this cheaper, but you also have two unique upgrades that you can actually add different sort of... Um, kind of characteristics to these. So, for instance, you know, with the barriers, which are relatively uh, plain-type items, but those are used to actually guide the orcs in different directions, you can either have it take reduced damage, or you can have it self-repair after taking damage. Um, One that's a little bit different would be the uh, arrow wall, which you have a choice between either shooting, you know, ice arrows or shooting flame arrows. So, you have some flexibility now, a little bit more flexibility in terms of exactly how you want your traps to play. Which is cool, and it adds again. There's a lot more depth to this one as a result of that. But again, you've got your you've got weapons, all kinds of weapons. I mean, look at this. This is a ton of different weapons, and you can actually buy these as soon as you earn skulls, as opposed to in the last game you actually had to earn them through gameplay. You now have trinkets that actually you know uh, help with certain stats. Uh, you even have some costumes that you can go into. So again, there's a lot to unlock in this game. So if you're the type that likes you know completion, you're going to be happy with this type this type of game. And the changes that have been made. So I'm going to go ahead and invite Aaron to a party, which it's really easy. The only thing is you're not going to see characters actually in the game. You're going to have to invite them through Steam. 
I don't have an issue with that at all. So the the Steam interface is really good. Yep. Uh, there, I don't see uh, any reason for them to do it any differently. Exactly. I mean, and and they're gonna they're obviously gonna integrate. Like, why would they make their own, well, you know, back end stuff for And that? because it's, like, two-player game, this isn't the type of game you're just going to play with some random person. I mean, it, it seems to me like it makes more sense to play this with a buddy. So. Can, can you do no, that? No. no. There's no matchmaking? Nope. You can only play... Nope, no, can okay. only play yeah, that's what I was... That's what I meant. Well, it's, it's, and, and they're selling two packs, right? So... Yep. Yep, exactly. So buy one for your buddy. It's a lot of fun. It looks like uh, Aaron's playing as the lady. He is. And, and the, she has some different traps and different abilities. I haven't really dug into her too much, but again, um, there's just a whole lot to this Also, game. I've heard a lot of names for magicians. War Mage may be my new favorite. No, it's probably the best. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with Tunnels, which is uh, one of the uh, earlier levels, but it's a level that's going to kind of let us show you how casual the game can be, and then we'll just kind of go from there. I don't know if the what the if there's a discount for a two pack right now, but I, I know there was uh, during the pre order phase. But it's normally fifteen dollars um, for a copy. But hey, look, Steam usually the puts a discount on there. Like but, yeah, Where but yeah. Are so Where are these um, tunnels? If, if you've not played Orcs mind. Must Die, basically every stage You're starts out with this kind of now? planning preliminary like stage, which you put some traps down, you've got as much time as you want, though if you're aiming for a lot of skulls, Plus, you want to go as quickly as you want, out, as quickly as you possibly can. So Aaron and I are going to kind of try to figure out our strategy from this point, uh, because usually there's, you know, two different entrances. How it usually works out is one guy is going to take on one, and then the other guy is going to take the other one, but it actually benefits you to play off of each other's traps, because they're going to start, they're going to start out from this area, and then they're going to go from there yeah so yeah if, like if you look in the upper right there um and feel free to start that while i'm talking about it but there's uh, uh you'll see on the mini map the two Let's blue go. areas uh that show like the the uh what do they call them rift portals or yeah yeah yeah. Well, that's what you're defending well anyway so yeah the, so the orcs, the orcs come through those rifts and uh but before when you're in the setup phase it flashes on the rifts that they're actually coming through so you know beforehand where they're coming it, so it's it's kind of nice you know, it didn't do that them. in the last game yeah so a few of those levels. I mean, as the game, as the levels get going, it, it's there's a lot. There is some trial and error to this game. I mean, you can get good, but you know, once you know exactly what sort of enemies are coming out, and that's what you're going to base your so traps we some, on. We got some spike traps, some arrow traps. What's this fan looking thing? That fan so looking. Trap? Actually, what that's going to do is is we'll, we'll let some of them get up there. Oh, freeze. Well, no, 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 he, no, he no, shot him with a free. So we'll let we'll yeah. let some of these guys get walking up on these traps. So that that fan is essentially going to send these guys flying up in the air. Okay, and doesn't always kill them, but what it's going to do is you actually, if you put a trap above that, you're going to just yeah, get your score multiplier you that. going. That's nice. your that's your high level play right there. I don't usually, you know, I don't use the fans until I'm actually going for score. So, but they're useful. I mean, there's not anything that isn't useful in this game, but you know, traps on the right side now. You're going to have a. Uh, Oh, so it's flat. Yeah, I see that on the mini map. And you don't get, you don't always get the unlimited time. No, that's like, I think it's every third wave, maybe. So Aaron has uh, some. What is that? Those cannons. He's got an acid spray. Oh, okay. Actually, which is, Ooh, which I haven't is seen cool. that one. Yeah, which is one of the different one, one of the ones that I think I'm not sure if War Mage. I have access maybe. to that one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have access to that yet. So uh, Ethan and I uh, played some of this the other day. Um, together co-op we, we played through i don't know, like maybe five missions or so and uh the different levels i had some pretty interesting layouts um they they had some uh some that had uh you know like multiple levels kind of like this does but that when they were a little bit more complicated so and the traps. rifts were more spread out so you had to be a little bit uh, more careful like where you didn't just have two choke points yeah. you would have maybe like four or five or something i didn't realize the guys were coming from the lower level too well, they fall off a yeah. lot of times. Okay. Like when we were, actually, that, that's funny because when we were doing this, I had some. Uh, I think I had like the spring the traps or something. They were launching them down low, the and I didn't know. And, and Ethan is taking them out, and and I kind of was. It got a little bit frantic, and I was just in in the zone, and I wasn't paying attention. And then Ethan's back there taking out guys that are almost to our base, and. So, Ethan, did you start with the shotgun? Is that... You know, actually, the shotgun is a new weapon. Yeah, because he had the um, bow and arrow in the yeah, last the one. Yeah, the last one. And, and you can still have access to that, actually. But I, I started playing with the shotgun. I actually really like it because... Ooh, it's the alt fire through. you like. They're getting yeah. through. 
Well, watch his alt fire. It's this. Uh, it's a grenade. It's oh. a bouncing grenade, and yeah. that yeah, it does damage, and it knocks guys back too, which is really beneficial. Yeah. Also, it's notice how I got really excited bus. about them getting through, but you're not worried at all. No, <laughs> you've nope. got you've got some leeway, and actually, you have mining carts, Those which actually <laughs> come in really handy. So, one of the other advantages that I'll show once we get into this next round is you, in addition to having traps, you almost have the tower defense aspect of this is. You also have these little guys that you can place at places, which usually tend to be your fallback dudes. So you've got archers who just, you know, obviously shoot arrows and they can hit people from a distance. You've got, like, paladins who, you know, fight up close. And then you have the new addition, which is these dwarves, which I'll put one of these guys down here. And they chuck grenades. And they just chuck grenades until they either get killed or people walk past them. Uh, but people don't tend to walk past them too often. So he has I'm a doing, hammer too. And he, and if they get too close, he will fight up close. I mean, he'll fight hand to hand. So How it's do the dwarves cool. feel about being at the same level as traps. Um, you know, they don't get affected by it. At, at least not that I've seen. So I think they're okay. You know, right. I think that, 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 that they can deal with that. They're strong-willed people. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And they're expensive. So I mean, at least they know that they <laughs> they, they cost more than a than a spike trap. You know. But um, but usually, I mean, how how I my strategy for most of these levels, and there are a few times that they throw a little bit of a, you know, a monkey wrench in the gears, is that you kind of want to have your 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 the choke points covered, mm -hmm. and then you want to have you want to make sure that you're maximizing kills up front so that you're not you know so you get your your the time limit going so you get more skulls because it's all about skulls you want skulls skulls act as your I guess currency if you will so that's how you level up traps buy new traps all that kind of stuff and you can get five skulls uh, on the level for you know actually beating it as well as possible which means not letting anybody get through the rift and also doing it within a time limit however you can get bonus skulls now which uh, you know just an aspect of the game that, that came into play because there's a lot more things to upgrade whereas in the first game you know you had a static number of upgrades that you can get and apply at any given time yeah and when you're um, and you're playing co-op and some of those bonus goals drop on the ground it's whoever grabs it first yeah I gotta say I like the love the art style of this game it's, oh yeah uh, Pretty smart choice. Looks looks nice. It's it also fun. yeah. It, it's a good looking game. It runs really well and you know, scales awesome. well. Yeah, I'm yeah. Imagine. You don't necessarily have to have like the craziest setup in the world. This isn't the fastest computer in here, yeah. and, and it runs it. I mean, it's everything's just blasted to the max and Final looks wave. great. Um, yeah. So when I, I played a little bit of or Orcs Must Die One on consoles, and. I don't know. There was, it was something funny with when they announced Orcs Must Die 2. First, my reaction was, holy shit, that's quick. I think it's like only been like nine months since Orcs Must Die 1. Yeah. And they said, we're adding co-op. And I was like, that's all I fucking need. Yep. Like, right. There's just something about... Uh, wow. Sometimes I react to quick releases that. like this that is a cash grab. But like when it's a downloadable game like this that's you know value-priced, yeah. I, I can't get too upset that you know it feels like they're just kind of polishing it up. And um, it... it I, w I wish I would see more of this quicker. Like yeah. as far as there was a lot that this game had going on, and I think they identified some weaknesses, and and they just fixed it and added a little bit more and this because additional character. And I got really excited when I heard that this was coming out so quick. If if they just said, uh, you know, new some new levels of some new weapons and traps and stuff like, but not the multiplayer. I would say, yeah, it sounds like yeah. DLC. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But. Once you add two players in, and then they've designed the levels around, around that too. I think I mean, it's yeah. from the stuff that I've seen. Like, yeah, there's because there's. I don't think there's any way you could cover some of that with. I don't know. Actually, I don't know what happens when you're playing a single player if there are less enemies that spawn. But there were times, yeah, there's uh, where we're playing, and th some of those levels, there's no way with just one person. I like I would have had a chance. So the two of us working together made a big difference, and you don't necessarily have to do. Um, the voice chat for you know to to, yeah, so I mean, to communicate. You can type a little bit between levels or something like that. Yeah, but uh, you, it's it's like obvious when you're in trouble to fall back, and it's obvious where the other guy is placing his traps in, in between yeah. levels, and it's obvious where you need to. So like, there's you can just kind of naturally just play the game, and you're going to know exactly what you need to do. And so I don't I don't see how there could be much of a communication problem unless you're just completely oblivious to like the yeah. mini map. If just watch the mini map and the you. Rift. Don't need to, to chat too much. To exactly. Now, what I've done here is actually we're going to move so up into a level that's got a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, a little bit more going on here. Uh, so you've got, right now, you've got 
um, rifts are actually up in the sky where you've got flying enemies in this game, so you have to watch out for that. So they do throw a little bit in there, but then you've also got two different rift locations that are on drastically different sides of the map. So this is one of those where you really want to make sure that so you're uh, focusing your, your defenses on one or the other, and then you actually... You have t uh, two possible uh, gates for the enemies to go into, which again complicates the matter. So you really have to spread your resources well, um, and you have to be as efficient as efficient as possible with this one. Whereas opposed to the other level, we could have kind of we kind of goofed around a little bit. You know, we weren't probably as efficient as we could have been. But um, this one, we we can't we can't let that happen. You can't build you can't build too close to the right rift here. there. But th y there's always uh, there's always some good bottlenecks. Yeah, it seems like. And some of the, uh, like, sometimes they'll, you can't build on the tracks. No. But that's okay, because that minecart will just smash right through the orcs, and it doesn't hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Which is nice. Which is a cool addition, now, because, again... To be honest, did you guys figure that out, like, on your own, or did it just kind of happen? I just noticed... Okay. Well, I noticed that it wasn't killing me, but then when... Because that's a nice little side the, bonus. On, on most of these levels, if you look at the mini-map, actually, you see the green pipes... Mm -hmm. And then there's like one that's not green. Oh. There are, uh, and in the last level you saw, and down in that little uh, little ravine, there was like a little glowing red sure. switch thing sign. That's a switch. You look at it, hit E, it changes the track so that the minecart will go down the other path. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. I like the little environmental. And so, you can also shoot yeah. it too to get it to switch, which is nice. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I was using melee, so... It, thank God it let me from a distance act. Well, and that's another cool thing too, and just talk about the builds of this game. I mean again with, with Orcs Must Die, I mean you had some you had a lot of options in terms of what trap you know, what Kill traps you wanted to use and what sort of, you know what your backup weapon I guess would be. Um, but with this one there's so much more. I mean you can play I mean you know, again I like to keep my distance. I'm probably mid range here, but you've got the bow and arrow which is gonna give you a little bit more, you know, a little bit more distance from your opponent. Um, but then also you've got you know you've got your your blade you've got a hammer you've got some kind of magic type weapons so I mean it's it's there's a lot that you can do with this you can have a lot of different sorts of fun which ones are are new from uh, from Orcs Must Die too so the um, now the some of these flying guys yeah they are they are not fun <laughs> but they're a good challenge it's just that you always kind of like you know. Take a deep they breath slow and you down. into it. Absolutely. They hit you with slow juice. So I'm going to tell hey Aaron, will you it's you you take time. out the flying guys? I'm going to focus on this side because I my he you know, he's got a better ranged weapon than I do at this point. So And you can upgrade that um, arrow trap to yeah. plant on ceilings. Oh yeah. cool. Which is nice. Uh, You're broke. Yeah. Which these first levels you can get away with just doing your weapons. Um, but later on You've got to, you know, plant stuff pretty quickly. We're moving a little bit quicker. My 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 planning stage. You know, again, I don't take a whole lot of time because I do like to get underneath those uh, uh, time limits. However, I would take a lot more time than I am doing right now. So, you don't want to just jump in here, guns a blazing, because there, again, there's some planning involved. But yeah. So, like the first two or three waves, you're kind of good on just weapons, and then you got to make sure you're getting enough points to exactly yeah. And okay. sometimes, and I would usually save up, you know, in between rounds you just some, to you get some dudes on the right side. So how does this got? flyers uh, game compare to Iron Brigade? As far as the, I think that's that's the first game that comes to mind as another one of these um, more action oriented tower defense games. Well, I actually think Dungeon Defenders. Okay, that's the first thing that pops into my head. There, this this seems simpler. I don't know why it seems simpler to, but, than Dungeon Defenders to me. But you know, uh, more you straightforward know maybe. I, I see. I think anybody can play Dungeon Defenders. Mm -hmm. I think this requires more action skills. Right. Yeah, because Dungeon Defenders, you're you're you have to do Which a maybe. lot of leveling and grinding and stuff like that. I mean, that's one aspect of that game that you know is is cool. But some people aren't into that. They just want to get into a game and go. And with this, I mean, it's important to level up your equipment, but. With Dungeon Defenders, you're leveling up every facet of everything that you do, as opposed to with, with this, you do. Again, there's a there's a limited amount of things that you can upgrade to a point, well, you know? And this doesn't have the loot component. Like, the enemies yeah, exactly. don't drop loot. No. You're you're buying some kinds of, like, upgrades and stuff mm -hmm. from a big, basically, skill maybe tree. That's, maybe that's why it seemed less complicated to me. But, uh, so, but, but besides the loot system, I think the traps, uh, trap placement is more complicated in this game. I yeah. mean, the combat is more complicated in this game. Um... But I do think they're very similar. They play out in similar ways. The waves, you know, build stuff between the waves, that kind of thing. 
And, um, and then very. But similar, what I would say is, you can have you can have a good time. Like you're not going to get sick of Dungeon Defenders because you've been playing a lot of Orcs Must Die. Like that's one thing about this game that I was a little bit because they came out pretty close together, and I was like, well, I'm going to get one of the yeah. other. And I think Justin, yeah. you actually. I said think that's that. what ha- I think that yeah. was honestly what happened. Was, oh, we'll play Dungeon Defenders instead. What yeah. do you mean Orcs Must Die is good too? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Like to me, like there's there's a little bit. I mean, I can get now, a, a different. I could get the same kind of you know feeling out of uh, out of each, but I can also get like there's a little bit of a difference. You know, there's it, this one I can pick up and play for a little bit, maybe play a level. Dungeon Defenders, especially when you start playing multiplayer, you're going to be, I mean, you need to commit a little bit of time, you know, to those strategies. The lack of multiplayer was uh, the biggest negative I had against this game, and the, it, it the only reason odd. why I would play Dungeon Defenders over Orcs Must Die, really. Yeah, and now, I mean, it, and now it, they fixed that. Yeah, and Dungeon Defenders is still a fun game, and Absolutely. it's, you know, it's got a really cool yeah, art style, trap, um, and it's four players, One, so that's two, cool. You know, uh, it's got a variety to the characters and the loot and stuff is is nice. Mm-hmm. However, just for like a quick fix of like you want a little bit of action, tower yeah. defense kind of thing or whatever. That that this game I think does the action and the trap stuff better. Mm-hmm. So we don't think. I mean, is my Iron Iron Brigade comparison still in the? Realm? I didn't play enough of that to um, to really I have an opinion. I think it is. Yeah, because again, it's not just the static tower defense that a lot of the. I mean, that's where you know uh, when. Tower defense started getting real popular, which I don't even know when that was. I mean, you're just watching as things happen. Uh, whereas with this game and and with you know Iron Brigade, there was there was that you know happy medium between okay, I've got to you know set things up properly, but I also have to be able to function as a you know in a third person action game too, because I can't just sit here idle and just hope that everything works. Now sometimes you can. With this game, you get good enough, you don't have to be in here you know doing as much of the shooting. Um, but again, that's as you've got a lot of upgrades. That's as you've been playing for a while, and that's probably the, uh, you know, why those two games are probably more similar. I almost see this a little bit more similar to Iron Brigade than I do Dungeon Defenders outside of, like the fantasy setting and just kind of like, again, you know, just kind of the way it looks. So two two big kind of questions here. I own Orcs Must Die one, uh, but I don't really have any friends to play with. Do I get Orcs Must Die two? Uh, if this is your style of game, yes, uh, because it you know you can lose a lot of time with it. I don't think co-op is absolutely necessary. I had more than enough time or fun playing the game by myself. Um, even now with co-op, I could I will I'm fine playing it myself. It's just as fun, uh, maybe fun in a different way. Um, I, was gonna, I was gonna say then that's my follow-up question is how has co-op changed the game for both of you guys? Um, like how do you do you how? Has it affected the way you play the game? Do you have a preference to play with co-op? Yeah, you know, it's you, you play it you play it differently because I mean, there's more guys coming at you, and you have to kind of work a little bit more as a team, you know. And you you probably don't want to take as much time thinking about trap placement, but it's more of a frantic like feels more arcadey to me. I don't know if that's a, a, a good thing to say when you have another guy there because you're kind of looking at his trap placement and crazy stuffs happening, and just the way like each other's traps and special abilities play off each other, it, it just feels. You know, a different kind of fun at that point. Well, uh, I think you're downplaying it a little bit because, Ethan, when you and I were playing, um, you know, not on camera or <laughs> audio, y- you get to take a little more time and stuff with it. And I thought we that? were, we pl- okay. d- actually did some planning. I felt like we kind of took our time a little bit with the upgrades and all that kind of stuff. I, th- I thought the pace was good. We didn't just blast through it just because we're playing multiplayer. Like, neither of us were in a big hurry, is yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and then I thought that our. Like, uh, we complemented each other pretty yeah. well with both our traps and our skills. I was doing melee, and yeah. you were doing the blunderbuss. Like, I was, I had a blade staff thing, and I was getting in close, knocking guys down, and then swinging at them uh, yeah, on so, the ground and so stuff. I get, and, and, yeah, I agree with you on that. I think it's, okay, so it's a difference between playing with someone who's, you know, like, I think Josh and I have the same mindset when we play these type of games. So, I mean, we were like, you know, we, we, we did play well off each other. But if you're just playing for fun, I mean, you can just play for fun and still have a good time with it, you know. So it's going to depend on who the other player is. I just think everything is better with a friend. Yeah. Oof, everything. <laughs> it did. It did. It did. Like I said, it it seemed to be a lacking feature. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm pretty comfortable I'm playing by myself, but in, in the right games, I prefer to have uh, some bros. And yeah. uh, this this one made a lot of sense. And I am. I'm super excited to try this out. So. Yeah, and and there are. Again, as you go a little bit farther into the levels, it seems like there are some harder levels. Sure. Like that. Again, I guess you know they throw less guys at you in single player, but 
the when it gets frantic, that's when it's most fun to me. Yeah. Like I wanted to get kind of crazy, and when it gets crazy, but you got a dude there with you to kind of back you up, it's like, oh god, I, I can't think- possibly handle this. And then the cavalry shows up. Yeah. Man, well, that might actually help my crazy. video game paralysis Populations problem when I feel overwhelmed. That at least I'm, I might have somebody that has my back. And then, like you said, because this this game doesn't have matchmaking, chances are it's going to be a, a buddy of mine. So right. I don't really yeah. feel as bad. If you're not if playing I, with I, jerks, I'm yeah. terrible. Unless well, your friends are jerks. There might be jerks. But I was going to say jerks you can put up with. At least. I, I play it completely differently when I play co-op. Like I have a little bit more fun. I, almost more fun with it. Not that I don't yeah. have fun by myself, but when I played the other game, like I would replay levels if like the first wave didn't go as perfectly yeah. as I wanted yeah. to. You know what I mean? And so again, <laughs> maybe, that's where that's where the yeah. difference maybe. in the game is. Like it's there's the fun co-op and there's the I, I want to be perfect. You know Do what I mean? Do you see, like, let's say, yeah, the fun co-op might be the way to start out to play this game yeah. before you want to try to do some high-level play, but do you see yourself getting into high-level co-op play, like where you're actually might have a... You may have to to get past the later levels. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I, what, was there a difficulty option? Uh, yes, there's 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 a you know a, the casual there's the warm age which is what we're playing on which is okay you know, your or, oh right right well, okay and so there's so nightmare early, so yeah. so you, I mean you know yeah so you could if you want to play the harder difficulties you're gonna have to mm-hmm. and the harder difficulties were I enjoyed playing those a lot but they are unbelievably difficult I mean it is <laughs> tough and in this game I mean again because it is a little bit more you can play you can play the higher levels by yourself but it is it is definitely geared more towards co-op play so you're going to struggle especially nightmare mode i don't know how you're gonna i don't know how you're gonna do that (laughs) i'm i'm looking forward to what the challenge is going to be like though so ethan what's your verdict awesome i'm very happy with it i uh i say awesome about everything i'm very happy with because you know i would have been happy with more levels i would have paid (laughs) 14.99 that's just how i felt about the game because it just hit that nerve um but the fact that they've they've again refined the system and added to it and you have i mean Co-op is a completely different game as far as I'm concerned. That's always good, you know? I, I think I'm going to actually jump consoles here. I mean, jump platforms here. Because I know there's no plans right now that they've talked about to bring Orcs Must wow, Die 2 to consoles. And I have the first one on 360. But I think I'm going to buy both on PC and just kind of get reoriented with it. And I can't wait to, to play some co-op and figure out if, like I said, that <laughs> kind of cures my... my fears about tower defense games that if I'm playing with a buddy that I might be able to actually make a little bit of progress and not get obsessed with every little detail. Yeah, uh, I've only played this co-op so far and I loved it. At the first game, it's fun, but I find myself, I, I'm like kind of a multiplayer guy, like a co-op guy. I don't play a lot of single player games these days unless it's like a deep story kind of thing. So, um, that said, this I had a lot of fun with this, and I will play more. Like uh, again, like I compare it, I guess, a lot to Dungeon Defenders because that this is that kind of style of game. But um, the action and is like really satisfying in this game. And if you want to do melee guy, you can. You want to do range guy, you can. Whatever, and um, just picking one of each in co-op, so you gotta have that nice spread of skills and stuff. Is I think a ton of fun. And that's, I guess that's the bottom line with this game is it can be as challenging as you want, whatever, but at the end of the day, it's just like a fun kind of, you want to play it for an hour, that's great. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's 15 bucks. Killing like, oh, season. I mean, what's wrong with you if you don't buy this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I'm, what the hell? I'm also really anxious to see where, what robot entertainment does after these after these games so yeah where do they you know where do they go i hope they, like, they i think they i mean i hope they stay with it. Yeah. i hope yeah. they stay small yes yeah. development cycle downloadable game yeah because the, but, uh, but this game has a lot of variety to it so they could go in a lot of directions too so yeah well, and, they, and the dlc was i like the dlc from the first game so i'm oh only i'm assuming it's going to be bigger and better yeah so it looks like uh that's a uh, three recommendations across the board there um uh, so yeah, Orcs Must Die 2 by Robot yeah, Entertainment. Great. It's out now on Steam, 15 bucks. Uh, we say check it out. Cool. So uh, yeah, so thanks for watching another video reflex review by Horrible.com. I'm Josh Lee for Justin Lacey and Ethan Moses. Thanks. We'll see you next time.